Hey y'all, it's Coach Steph. I'm coming on really quickly. I'm doing a pop-up live, Facebook, uh, or actually Instagram, Facebook. And um, I'm gonna be helping you and giving you some structure with your nutrition. So get a pencil and a piece of paper. And I know my people on Facebook, y'all already know me and y'all will watch the replay. So hashtag replay, if you're watching the replay, put it in the comments and let me know that you're watching. But let me just tell you like this, uh, this topic came up because I was in a Facebook group and uh, I was answering a question that somebody had about nighttime eating and snacks. So I think the person was having issues with um, like nighttime cravings and she said like, how do I get rid of these nighttime cravings? Like I'm, I wanna eat a lot of sugar. So I said, typically with my clients, like it's usually because you're not eating enough. It's usually because you're not eating enough protein. It's usually because you're not eating enough overall calories. You may not be able to like understand how to balance your nutrients, having some healthy carbs, protein, some fat, uh, fiber. And she was like, okay, how do I do that? So I kind of like broke down to her a little bit in text, like what, what I help my clients with in the Fit Figure Formula. And a lot of people were interested in the process and someone even asked me like, well, how do you, how much would you charge me for like building this plan? And I'm like, I'll just do a live on it. I will just uh, let you know how this works and how I help my clients. So inside the Fit Figure Formula, which is open for enrollment, by the way, you have until Monday to join. So if you're interested, if this is helpful at all, I would definitely go ahead and apply. Uh, go to my profile, the link is in the um, in my bio, and you can apply to the Fit Figure Formula because we get started onboarding next week um, so if this is helpful um, I want you to first of all make sure that you comment and then also um, you can apply so anyway I'm looking at my notes and uh, okay so first of all the first thing that we do is I help them in a step-by-step -step process so I'm kind of like giving all of all of the info to you right now but this works best when you layer it. So the first thing that I would recommend when I talk to anybody, if you are struggling with your nutrition and you don't have anything on your calendar that would help you to understand when you're supposed to eat, you don't have a time to reset, you don't have a, a, a plan of how to like build a balanced plate, this is for you. Okay, so one of the first things we do, I call it my golf ball habits, okay? So golf ball habits, and I show them a video that makes a lot of sense. So we have this jar, and I've told Facebook about this jar before. So you take the jar, and essentially, if I'm gonna put in golf balls, that means like my important things in life, the things that are mandatory, your health, you know, your family, things like that. Um, hey Trish, and I'm gonna put those golf balls in, right? And then I'm maybe gonna put um, pebbles, right, in this jar. Now, if you fill up the jar with golf balls and pebbles, it might look like the jar is pretty full. However, if you were to put in like some sand in there, which represents like the other like mundane tasks that you may need to do. You could fill the jar with golf balls, pebbles, and some sand, right? Um, so we have our golf balls, which are really important things. We have our pebbles, which are important, but not as important as the golf balls. And then you have the sand. And it looks like your jar, meaning your life. The, the jar represents your life. It looks like the jar is filled up. It looks like I, it's at capacity. But if you were to pour in water, you would see that like, oh, it has more capacity, right? And so after you put in the water, you're pretty much full, right? So if you were to do it backwards and put the water in and then the sand and then the pebbles and then the golf balls, you would not have room for your golf balls. And the reason why the golf balls are so important are because if you leave them out, everything else is gonna be harder your job, um, 
you know, dealing with your kids. You're not going to have as much energy. So we want to make sure that our golf ball habits, meaning the things that are going to take care of our body and take care of our mind are in the jar first. So I want you to look at your calendar. How do you manage your time? How do you manage your day? I live by my Google calendar. So if you have a, a written planner or a Google planner or whatever, um, these things need to be on your actual calendar. And if they're not, this is a first step. So if you don't use anything and you feel all over the place with your nutrition, you can't seem to make any real progress with your health journey, this might be something that you want to implement in your health journey. So you want to look at like, I give my clients a form and I have them put, what time do I wake up in the morning for each day of the week? What time do I go to bed each night, right? And all of this is what I call fuzzy. So fuzzy just means that like, you don't have to wake up every single day at seven o'clock or you're late. It's like, okay, if I usually wake up around seven, it's somewhere between six and eight, it's fine. So you wanna make sure you have your uh, your wake up time and your the time that you're going to bed. Then you wanna, I have my clients, this is the way that I do it. We map out our meal times. So I prefer my clients to start eating within two hours of them getting up. So let's say they um, get up at seven. Somewhere around nine, I would like them to have their first like meal or snack. So they take their the time that they wake up and then they map out every two to four hours they're eating. And they put that on their sheet of paper, okay? So a couple of things to think about are your weekends might look different than your weekdays, right? Because your schedule is different. A lot of us don't work on the weekends. Um, your summers might look different from your like fall and like springtime if you have kids at home. So understand that like this is not a set in stone thing, like this is how it works. It's like, no, I have to reevaluate every so often to make sure that this schedule is still gonna be working for me. So you have your wake up time, you have your sleep time. You have your um, meal times scheduled every two to four hours and it's two to four hours based on your actual hunger cues. So this is not just like a template that is that I give to everybody. You actually have to be in tune with how you feel and when you naturally get hungry. So some of us aren't really hungry as much in the morning time, but like that gap between like lunch and dinner, you might have a longer gap. I don't want my clients going longer than four hours eating. So you might wanna place your snack there because of your hunger cues, because of your schedule. So placing your snacks is strategic. It's not just like I'm just putting a snack in there because I'm supposed to be eating a snack. I'm listening to my body. This helps you to be a little bit more introspective and it makes the plan more customized because you're actually listening to your body. So everyone's gonna be a little bit different, okay? So you're gonna be placing your meals in between your wake up time and your sleep time. And it's like, if you wake up early and you go to bed early, you, or actually if you go to bed late and if you go to bed late and then you wake up early, you may not need as many, um, or you may need more meal times, right? So if I'm up for a short amount of time throughout the day, I may not need to eat as many times. Now I will say this, that um, a lot of my clients will need three meals and one snack to meet their protein. And when I say need, it just means like the convenience of it and also like not overstuffing yourself. So typically, most of my clients need uh, three meals and one snack. Some of my clients will need three meals and two snacks. And one of those snacks should be like a power punch of protein, just like one of your go-to things. Um, but again, that is all gonna determine or be determined by your hunger cues and your schedule, okay? So you have your meal times, right? And then I have them put in their walks and their workouts. 
So a lot of times we will rely on our workouts to burn fat, to burn calories, and to reach our goals. But actually working out is a very inefficient way for you to lose weight. And so some of y'all are in the gym working so hard, right? I don't care how hard you work during a one hour session. If you have, if you go to the gym, let's say four times a week, which is what I recommend for my clients, and you, that's still four hours. It's four hours during a work week. You still need to be eat, or you still need to be walking. You still need to be moving outside of your workouts. That's like really, really important. So um, you don't maybe not have to walk every single day, but there needs to be some intentional movement. We sit down a lot. So if you're working at home or working from home, hey, Davina, um, and you're sitting a lot, taking breaks at work, uh, making sure you get like at least a 15 minute walk in somewhere throughout the day. I recommend 30 for my clients. Uh, so that could be 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes at lunchtime, 10 minutes in the afternoon. But on your workout days where, or on your non-workout days, I should say, you still need to be moving. And even if you do have a workout throughout the day, you have a one hour workout, you still need to be moving and not just sitting, literally sitting down all the rest of the time. Because that one hour that you're moving is not gonna be as beneficial. You can actually burn more calories by like just being more active throughout the day. But we discount that because we think that it has to be a sweaty like workout session, which is not true. Um, so you wanna put in your walks and your workouts. So I want you to like place that based on where you already are. If you only get 3,000 steps a day, then 10, by going for 10,000, everybody wants to do 10,000, that's not the goal. I need you to like just stair step it, so 4,000, right? So how could I get a thousand extra steps a day and let's like start moving a little bit more? So if you're not walking right now at all, I would just say like start with two or start with three and put that on your calendar, like intentional times so that you block off this time. If you don't block off the time, the time will get blocked off for you. If you leave room for things to pop up, other people's schedule, it's gonna get taken up. So make sure that you have that on your calendar. So Demina, I know you're watching. Um, we talked about putting in your walk, I mean your, your wake up time and your sleep time. And then putting in meal times every two to four hours um, in between your wake up time and your sleep time and then putting in your walks and your workouts. I recommend working out four times throughout the week, but you may need to work up to that. Right now, you may only be doing zero. And so start out with one, start out with two, and then work your way up to those three, okay? So then um, another really important uh, thing that you need to have on your calendar is your reset day. So for example, every Saturday, inside of my private coaching app, which is where I give my clients a blueprint of exactly what to do every single day, I um, have a reset. So it's like a check-in basically. So you need to be checking in with yourself every single day and saying what went well this past week, what did not go well, and then how can I troubleshoot? Like what do I need to do in order to troubleshoot? You will never have two bad weeks in a row if you do this. Okay, so it's okay to have a bad week. It's okay to for things to not go as planned, but you do need to have a, a way for you to reset. And every morning, honestly, is a really good time to do that, um, which is why in the Fit Figure formula, I do have my clients do what I call a power hour, which is intentional time alone with yourself to think powerful thoughts on purpose. But um, that like hard reset every week is gonna be really helpful. So I need you to put that on your calendar. So if you're using something like Google Calendar, you wanna put that on your calendar and you wanna put that on repeat so that I never have to touch that again. It's gonna come up on my calendar every single week. And what that's gonna do is protect the time. It's protecting that time so that you know that you have an appointment with yourself, okay? So we have our reset time on our calendar. We've got our walks and workouts on our calendar. We've got our meal times, be flexible with this, right? Um, on your calendar. We've got our wake up time and our sleep time. 
Um, and just a note about the wake up time and sleep time, just make sure that the wake up time and the sleep time, you're actually getting eight hours. I need you to count it on the weekends and on the weekdays, like make sure that you actually have enough, you're leaving enough space to actually get eight hours of sleep. Um, Cause that's another reason why you might be craving sweets at night is because you're not getting enough sleep. Okay, so then we have our reset time and then you really need to have a plan, shop and prep time. So this means planning your meals, whether or not you're using MyFitnessPal, I teach my clients to hit their macros every day without having to be in MyFitnessPal every day. We don't track, we pre-plan. Um, so we're gonna plan our food and then we go shop for the food that we planned and then we prep. And I don't think prep is mandatory, but I do think it's helpful. My philosophy is all or something, right? So prep all or something. You can do everything or you can just do your snacks or you can just do the meal that is the toughest for you, which a lot of my clients is dinner. So maybe I'm just gonna make sure that I have a prep dinner so that I'm not ordering DoorDash. Um, Demina said, I am walking with my coworker two hours, oh, two miles. Um, Monday through Friday, but I started feeling like it was becoming so routine that my body was getting used to it. Yeah, I don't think that. Walking is amazing. And really, um, I mean, do you enjoy it? You can always switch it up, but it's not even about like your body getting used to it. Your body needs to get used to it. Like, and you can kind of like play games with yourself. Like maybe you walk a little bit faster. You may not be running, right? But you may, um, I like to do intervals. Um, but walking is a fundamental practice that like as long as we can walk, we should be walking. So I would definitely not overthink that Demina. Keep going. That sounds like a good practice if that's working for you. Um, so we want our plan, our prep and our shop day on our calendar. So my clients, I give them three options. So number one, I don't recommend if you are doing prepping, I don't recommend for you to prep and plan and grocery shop all on the same day that makes for a horrible Sunday. Like it's just a really long day. So I typically like the option for you to plan and shop on the same day and then prep on a completely different day. Um, and, and that's really if you are going to prep, you're using option one. Option one is essentially where I'm going to uh, plan and shop on one day and I'm going to prep and I'm doing that for the week. Right, that's option one. And that usually works best for a lot of people. Now, for some people, they like to do my option two, which is I'm gonna plan two times a week. Instead of trying to plan for my entire week, I'm just gonna plan for three days at a time. So maybe that might be like, I'm planning on a Saturday and a Wednesday or a Tuesday or whatever. So for my people who are like, I don't know what I'm gonna wanna eat on Wednesday on Saturday, right? Like so. You might not want to plan super far ahead, but this is an easy way. Put it on your calendar. My planning day is Saturday and Wednesday or whatever days work for you, okay? So you want to have that on your calendar because if you don't have that time protected, you're not going to plan. You may or may not go to the grocery store or if you do go to the grocery store, you're just buying random things and then you have to figure out what to eat during the week. Right. So do you see how this is creating some structure for you? So um, a lot of my clients really like structure, but you may be listening to this and you may, may be like, I don't want a lot of structure that feels restrictive. It feels tight to me. And here's the thing. You can make this however you like it. But even my like type B people who are like, I just want to like do what I feel right. Even those people actually benefit from having some structure. So you can take you know, all or something of these tips and implement it in a way that works best for you. But a lot of times I find that my type B people who don't like structure and they start to feel a little bit constricted, um, it is really out of a lack of like the desire to, to make decisions. Like I don't want to decide. And then you end up actually trading in what you want most for what you want right now because what you want most is to be able to lose weight to be able to keep it off without dieting um to be able to feel good and you're not able to do that if you don't have any structure so i want i really want you to lean into that if you're having some resistance um, or join the fit figure formula and i will help you out personally to um, map this out for you 
okay? So then, now we have our meal times mapped out. You got the time you're going to bed, you got the time you're waking up. You have your walks and your workouts, your reset day, your plan, prep, and shop day. Um, and then, what are you going to eat? So obviously, all of us are going to be a little bit different in what we like. I do not give my clients a meal plan. I absolutely hate writing meal plans. Every time I tell somebody I'm a dietitian, they're like, oh, I need a meal plan. And I'm like, I am not writing you no meal plan. I am not. Okay, I'm going to teach you how to build a meal plan. And the way that I start initially with my clients is giving them the breakfast formula, lunch formula, dinner formula. And it's very simple. Essentially, I give them, um, I help them to categorize their food so that they know what food goes into what food group. And then I say, okay, for breakfast, we're gonna start out practicing having a protein, having a fiber-filled carb, and having a, um, a healthy fat. And we talk about the portion size. So I could make a meal plan for just about anybody that doesn't have like a chronic illness or a disease or something like that. We're just talking about weight loss, a meal plan. And it could be the exact same food for all of us. The only thing that would be different would be the portion size. Right, so everything can fit if you understand your nutrition, which is what I teach my clients. But we start out in a very simple way where you're just putting in a protein, a fiber filled carb, and a healthy fat for breakfast, right? We practice that. Then lunch is essentially that same formula, but we're adding in um, a veggie. So when I say a fiber filled carb, a fiber filled carb is either a fruit, a non-starchy vegetable or a whole grain so whole by whole grain i mean like um bread tortilla anything that has a label on it it has three grams of fiber or more plus the starchy vegetables like potatoes so at lunch and dinner you're going to have um an actual veggie like a non-starchy veggie and you might have a uh, starchy carb but you could have double veggies, okay? So we start off with those formulas. And the snack formula is a protein and I think a fiber-filled carb. Um, so you start out with that. And so why is this important? It's super important because you wanna make sure that you're having a balanced plate. Some of y'all are so hungry because you're eating a lot of carbs and you don't have as much protein, you don't have as much healthy fat, and you're feeling hungry. I was just at Starbucks not too long ago, and I was telling someone, I was telling the lady, I was like, I love the Starbucks like little refresher drinks, but I don't get them because I just want more. You see, like I went and I got my water, I did good. Um, I don't, I don't like to drink something and then I just want more of it. If you're eating a lot of carbohydrates, carbohydrates are not bad but you're not balancing them with a protein or healthy fat, all you're gonna want is more carb. So you wanna make sure that you are having balanced meals. And so this is where we start. We start out with planning those meals in that way. Again, I'm giving you all of this at one time, but we break this down into inside of the Fit Figure Formula and we go week by week and we don't get to actually hitting their macros until week six because you can see progress in your weight and in your photos and in your um, measurements without having to get super specific and hit a macro. If I started y'all out with week one, we're hitting macros, it would be too much. It would be very confusing. Y'all probably be doing it wrong and guessing on a lot of stuff. So I we lean into curiosity first and understand your food. By week 16, my clients are in week 16 right now, they don't even need my help. I become useless. <laughs> At week 16, they're just like, yeah, I got it. And they're doing it on their own. And this is something that you can take with you forever. So I always say like, you're not signing up to the fifth figure formula for 16 weeks. You're signing up for what you learn in 16 weeks that you can take with you forever. So if you're hopping on, um, on Instagram, I'm talking about, um, making sure that we have some structure within our meal plan. So if you guys are um, late to the party, definitely go back and watch this um, because if you implement this 
on your calendar and you kind of like see it's so helpful like i like visuals so like i like to be able to see like okay here's where i'm going to do this here's where i'm taking my walks here's where i am doing my workouts here's how i can structure my meals it's so helpful um and so this is like a high level overview and inside the fit figure formula i take you through this process step by step as well as help you work on your mindset. So this is the really important part because I can give you the structure, y'all. Y'all can go on YouTube right now and there's plenty of coaches that will tell you how to hit your macros, how to count your uh, calories, how to do all of that. And the strategy is important, but it means nothing. The best diet, the best strategy means nothing if you actually don't have the mindset to do it consistently. If you freak out every time the scale goes up, and you start self-sabotaging, your strategy is not gonna help with that. If you are an emotional eater, a strategy for hitting your macros is not going to help because you need help managing your mindset and your emotions, right? Um, if you know that, you know, you self-sabotage, a strategy is not gonna help. So this is why I coach so hard on your identity your relationship with the scale, your relationship with food, your relationship with yourself, self-awareness, understanding how to motivate yourself and how to actually take action. Because if you don't know how to do that, then you're still going to be stuck. You're going to be stuck with an amazing plan, an amazing strategy, and not you don't have the tools to actually implement it. So um, I hope that this was helpful. So for my ladies on Facebook, um, who are asking me about this, this is for you. This was the training that I was talking about inside of the uh, Facebook group, um, talking about how to structure your meal. So if you want more details about how I help my clients um, through this process and more, how I help them, you know, help hold them accountable, help give them support, um, you'll get a registered dietitian in your back pocket for 16 weeks. We meet every Monday and Thursday, 7 p.m. CST. Uh, all the calls are recorded. Uh, enrollment is open right now. So if you have been struggling, if you've been watching me for a while and you're still in the same place or you've made minimal progress, then you should be applying to the Fit Figure Formula. Um, on Instagram, it is, the link is in my bio to apply. On Facebook, um, you can go to my page and there's a link in there somewhere. Or just DM me and I'll send you the link. Um, so if you're watching this, hey, Lakia. Let me know if y'all have any questions at all. Do you have questions about what I went over? Again, if you came in late, watch the replay. So I'm gonna recap one more time, y'all, and give y'all time to put in your questions if you have any questions. Um, write out your, your wake up time, sleep time. Your meal times, every two to four hours. I don't want you going longer than four hours because you know what happens? Even if you meal prep, and you go longer than four hours without eating, what happens is your brain starts to be like, I don't even want that meal prep. I just want something yummy, filled with sugar or filled with fat or filled with lots of salt. Um, and then we think that like, oh, I can't control my emotions. It's just like, girl, no, you was just hungry. You was hungry. So make sure that you're eating. My clients are fed. They're like, how can I eat more than this? And I'm like, we can do it, right? If we're eating single ingredient foods, it's gonna be very filling. You're not gonna be hungry. Um, so we talked about putting those meal, meal times on your schedule, your walks and your workouts, your reset time so that you never have two bad weeks in a row, um, your shop plan and prep days, times. Um, and then I went over a little bit about the actual formula of, the meals so uh, if you watch the replay just let me know if you have any questions slide into my dms and um let me know if if i can help you further so all right y'all i'm gonna hop off i actually think i'm going live again tonight yep in my facebook group i'll be going live um talking about how to get fit after 40. so if you're watching on facebook or instagram and you have not yet joined my facebook group if you are a female perfectionist, um, you can come over to the Facebook group. I'll be going live tonight. I think it's like 6 p.m. And talking about how to get fit after 40. So I'm going to be 41 this year, y'all. I will be 41. And it's crazy. It's so crazy to say, like, life goes by so fast. 
Um, but one thing that I was thinking about at the gym today, I was like, you know, your age is not really the determining factor in like whether you're gonna be fit or healthy or whether you look fit or not. Like, it's really what we do. It's how much muscle we create. It's how we manage our, our mindset, our emotions, um, in order to like execute the things that we need to do. Um, how, how good we're taking care of our body. Like, how are you taking care of you? Because I know that I want to be like fit for a very long time. Like, I'm not trying to uh, be immobile or catch any diseases. So, um, all right, y'all. I'm going to hop off. Um, I will see y'all later. Thanks for watching on Instagram. I don't even know how to, how do I get off of here? Okay, bye y'all. All right, Facebook. I will see y'all um, in my group at 6 p.m.